In this module, we will look at the boundaries and content of the axilla. The axilla, or commonly known as the armpit, is an important anatomical concept in order to understand the structures that enter and exit the upper limb. Let's look at a simple line drawing representation of this region and come a little bit anterior to the shoulder joint so that the scapula disappears and we now have our chest wall in relationship to the arm. There are structures that emanate from the neck area going behind the clavicle and enter into the chest wall. Similarly, we have structures that go from the neck behind the clavicle into the arm. And the reverse direction is also possible where we have structures from the arm and the chest wall going into the neck region. These are all structures that traverse the axilla and understanding of the boundaries of the axilla is helpful in seeing the relationships. If we represent this with a 3D model like seen here, we can create a representation of that transverse section and understand it in a much better way. We will make a section at about this level, and we will result, which will result in the formation of a transverse section as seen here on the left side of your screen. It's a little difficult sometimes to conceptualize how we have arrived at this transverse section as seen on your left side of the screen. So let me play a little animation that might help you in that mental rotation exercise. So here we have our 3D model that now is reduced in size and a plane comes and cuts it. We lift up the superior part and rotate it and we're now looking at it from an inferior vantage point. Note that the rib is seen in its entire length and we know that ribs have an oblique angulation. Therefore, strictly speaking, this is not a transverse section. It is actually an oblique section. But for our purpose, we'll continue to call it a transverse section just so that it is easy to communicate it. And I will now represent this with a simple line drawing and I will put on the structures in order to understand the boundaries and the contents of the axilla. So what we have is mostly the right side. We are looking at it from the foot end. This is the midline over here. And you have medial and lateral as shown on the screen. The first structure that we can mark is the rib, which is the rib seen here running through its entire length from the posterior part where the vertebra is to the anterior part where the sternum is. The second important structure is the humerus which has been also cut in its transverse section, and we are seeing a section of the shaft of the humerus. There's one other bone that is relevant here, which is this flat bone that we see, the scapula, and it has also been cut in its transverse section. And this whole area is covered by skin, which is seen here. The first muscle that has an important relationship to the axilla is a large muscle known as the pectoralis major muscle. This is a muscle that has its attachment more medially onto the rib cage as well as adjacent areas and then the fibers traverse, traverse laterally to attach onto the humerus, the anterior part of the humerus. This pectoralis major muscle forms the anterior boundary of the axilla. The second muscle, which is an important muscle in relation to the axilla, is known as the serratus anterior muscle. This is a muscle that has its attachment onto the medial border of the scapula and the fibers run to the ribs, as shown here. This muscle, along with the underlying ribs, forms the medial boundary of the axilla. The remainder posterior area is filled by a combination of muscles, and in order to understand that, we'll put them in their position. The first one of these muscles is the teres major. This muscle extends from the scapula to the anterior part of the humerus, as shown here. Depending on exactly at which level the section has been taken, you may have the muscle uh, in addition to, you may have another muscle in addition to the teres major. One of those muscles is the subscapularis muscle, and it has its attachment onto the anterior side of the scapula, as shown here. 
and it then traverses to the anterior part of the humerus. In our section, it has been seen, it is seen only in part of the, um, the, its course and has been cut away as it approaches the anterior part of the humerus. There's a third muscle that may also uh, come into the section, again, depending on the level at which it has been cut. This muscle is the latissimus dorsi muscle, and it is uh, the terminal part of the latissimus dorsi muscle which comes and attaches onto the anterior part of the humerus. So depending on the level at which uh, the section is made, you may have one or two or all three of these muscles, uh, and collectively they form the posterior boundary of the axilla. Now there are some important structures that are contained within this roughly triangular cross-sectional space, and we'll look at those next. The first one of those structures is the artery, known as the axillary artery. This is an artery that continues from the root of the neck traverses the axilla, and then enters into the arm. It provides several branches in this region and then continues in its journey down the upper limb. R ex uh, very closely related to this and just anterior to the axillary artery is the axillary vein. And it is seen here, represented in blue. There are a number of other structures in this area that are related to the axillary vessels in the form of nerves and lymph nodes. One nerve is very important and can be easily identified, and it's a nerve that sits on the serratus anterior muscle, known as the long thoracic nerve, and it is seen right here in its location on the serratus anterior muscle. There are several other nerves, and we'll leave, leave them unnamed, for the moment at least, and these are in relation to the axillary vessels, and are parts of the brachial plexus collectively. We will look at the details in a future lesson. To complete the story of the axilla, the remainder of this area is filled with some lymph nodes and fat, which is represented here in yellow. Thus we find that the axilla is this roughly pyramidal shaped space. In a transfer section, it has a triangular outline formed by these three boundaries, anterior, medial, and lap posterior, and then filled with these structures in the substance of the axilla.